Joining me now on that big subject, Dr. Kunal Sarkar, Senior Vice Chairman, Director and Head of Cardiac Surgery at Medica Super Specialty Hospital in Kolkata, one of the country's leading cardiologists on the show tonight. I just want to, before I come to both of you, play this graphic out about heart attacks before and after COVID because that really might shed more light just purely in terms of data. Now, before COVID, in 2017, 23,246 uh, deaths of heart attacks. 2018, 25,764. 2019, 28,005. These are all reported deaths. After COVID, 2020 went up to 28,579. 2021, 28,413. 2022, 32,457. Source being the NCRB here. Dr. Sarkar, when you look at those numbers, do you see any connection that post-COVID, post-COVID vaccine, people are more vulnerable to heart attacks or is that simply myth-making? Uh, Rajdeep, thank you for uh, having us. Uh, just two points to make. You see, India with a population of about 140 crores, uh, what's happening at this uh, point of time is basically that, you see, we have a daily mortality rate in this country of more than 40,000. Mm-hmm. So that is India's average mortality rate per day, of which 30 to 40,000 of our deaths per day is due to cardiac problems. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm just giving you a point in example that you see some of this alert was sparked off recently uh, from a few districts in Karnataka and all that. Uh, But, you know, it has been a worry. It has been a worry in the public domain for a a country which has a high incidence of heart problems. We have our sort of uh, an an unequal access to health care. So all these problems put together with a high incidence, yes, our fatality rate from heart problems is comparatively higher. We have to accept it. Honestly speaking, the table of numbers doesn't make much sense because our annual case fatality rate from heart problems would be much higher, much higher, Mm -hmm. because uh, much higher than that. Now, what has happened basically is COVID in itself definitely caused higher death rate from cardiac problems, especially during the second wave when we had the Delta variant. There is no authenticated data to support the fact that COVID vaccination, which has to be set aside from COVID itself, Mm -hmm. that COVID vaccination by itself caused more heart attacks. Now, that has been a fear. Why has that been a fear? Because certain vaccines, like the mRNA vaccines, which Mm -hmm. we did not have, caused an inflammation called, called carditis, myocarditis. And the vaccine that we had in plenty called Covishield, Covishield caused in very few cases a clotting disorder in the brain, which was called, you know, cerebral uh, venous thrombosis, etc. But hardly less than 10 cases were recorded worldwide. So to cut a long story short, India as it is has a punishing incidence of cardiac problem Mm -hmm. with a higher rate of cardiac mortality. During COVID, the numbers were even worse because COVID, especially the second wave per se, caused more cardiac problems. But did COVID vaccination, did it at all cause or is it still causing uh, silently, seepishly, is it causing higher cardiac death rates? We, ought, we, are, we, we would have to keep our radar up, our eyes open, but very little data to support that. Okay, so I, I think, you know, uh, at, at the very outset, here is India's, one of India's leading cardiologists making it very clear that there is no correlation between the COVID vaccine per se and heart attacks. But yes, cardiac arrests in India are a major cause of death. Uh, Dr. Sarkar, you want to make sense of that for us? Are we actually not looking at the real issue, which is lifestyle genetics as the primary reason for heart attacks rather than suddenly pointing a finger at vaccines? The worry is that a lot of people between the age of 40, 45, high profile, have suddenly had heart attacks and that has led to this alarm. A couple of points, Rajdeep. <clears throat> you see, first of all, uh, number one is, you see, why there is always uh, sort of whispers and 
uh, murmuring about the COVID vaccine business in India, it's worldwide and probably in India a little bit more so, is we did not do a very efficient job of recording the vaccine side effects. Mm -hmm. It was highly criticized that unlike, you know, unlike other health systems, which are a little bit more systematic and organized their hours, people, we did a brilliant job. More than 200 crore vaccines were given by India, a record by any standards. But did we follow it up? by recording the, the side effects of vaccines adequately, sadly we did not. That was one deficiency mm -hmm. and that leaves a little bit of ground for you know discontent here and there. Second point is, you know what Dr. Subramanian was referring to so correctly, is correction of other problems. Now, you see, if you consider especially the onslaught of COVID, 60 to 70 percent of India's disease burden and mortality came from the second wave. Mm -hmm. And the second wave had rampant use of steroids. Now, in a population where more than 20 percent of population is already standing to be diabetic, mm -hmm. what did Profuse steroid use due to the diabetic profile of Indians. Now, we are not sure about this as of yet. I, we would certainly request bodies like the ICMR. Mm -hmm. The ICMR study was extremely good about mm -hmm. the side effect, their, their observations about the vaccine. But the ICMR and the other bodies should do a current state about prevalence of diabetes mm -hmm. and how well are we controlling diabetes. Right. These, this needs to be looked at pretty soon. And I could not agree with Dr. Subramaniam and others that flu vaccine and other respiratory vaccines, that has to be made because look, a part of India is also aging. We have more people beyond 55, beyond 60. So getting to know our diabetic profile better, mm -hmm. recording the effects and side effects more efficiently, and safeguarding the people from all these seasonal outbreaks would be really important at this stage. Okay.